Just tell us about your black hole theory and how that is related to, because it, it, we seem to go through, uh, through highs and lows and, and it's okay. Well, you know, you must have known, uh, must have felt sometimes that you're like on a total, you feel very, very centered and you think, oh, I'm feeling so zen. And then the next minute you're kind of um, going, oh, that person's bothering me. Why is that, you know, knocking me off that, you know, that, I want to get back to that calm. Life is like that, and your life is, um, I know this is going to sound really strange, but it's kind of like a breathing black hole. And uh, why I say that is because what I've um, brought through in this theory, and I've provided so much evidence for this as well, is that the, all the evidence are in the book? Yeah, the, loads of references, loads of physics references, you know, from telescopes and all the hard data we're talking about, you know, from, I actually sat in physics conferences and, you know, <laughs> a lot of it went over, you know, tried to follow all these equations, you know. So um, it's that every single process throughout the whole cosmos is actually bringing in light from higher dimensions. And the light gets to our reality, and that's when it splits into, you know, matter and antimatter. The matter goes into making us, the stars, everything. Everything's following the same sort of process. And the an antimatter, you can kind of call it like our subconscious or our aura. And what we want to do in life is, like, look at our antimatter selves, the things that we keep hidden, the things that are shadow selves, and kind of bring that together with our matter selves, look at the mirror, and actually bring that into life. Light. and through doing that the magic in your life will increase and can we call in that light more how can we be more in tune with this black hole how can we because you have expressed that we have actually black holes even chakras are black holes Absolutely. Everything going all the way down is this black hole process of bringing light from the infinite mind through the dimensions and into our dimension. As I said, physicists say that, um, you know, it, Joanne Magesha is a physicist in London who says that actually light is infinite. This is a mainstream physicist and it's actually curled up in higher dimensions. So it's not something that uh, it's out of mainstream academia. You know, this is someone who's a professor who's got tenure in a, in a college, in a university. So uh, same with us. You know, we all have infinite, we're all connected to infinite light. The center of every black hole, whether it be the center of a galaxy, the center of our chakras, the center of our atoms, it's all the same. It's all the one consciousness. And we are manifestations of that one consciousness, which spirals through the dimensions. So our lives, too, are like breathing black holes. We go from a state of polarity to coming together into light, a state of polarity and coming together into light. Those are hard moments. Mm -hmm. That's where we are integrating the matter and the antimatter and going back into the light. That's our journey. Yeah. The, 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 the back and forth, uh, does that ever change or gets uh, a little bit breathing at a, at, a, at a slower rate or just more in harmony as we're evolving or as we're going into higher dimensions? Well, it's, it's how does that evolve, you know? How does it It, that's definitely our journey to be, you know, sort of breathing um, back and forth where we have the matter and antimatter bringing together. Sometimes we can get a bit stuck, you know, if we've had an emotional shock um, and that's that's the nature of trauma. You know, you think about when what we call po post-traumatic um, trauma, you know, stress syndrome, where you actually have the person, they're not present, are they? They're in shock. What's happened is part of their consciousness is still a little bit stuck there. And um, what happens if we get too much of that is that we're, we're getting stuck in space and time. And, you know, we all come across people from time to time and they make us feel a bit weighed down and heavy and you know and that's probably because they've had trauma in their lives that they've not resolved so they literally will create more matter and antimatter and that can even make them put on weight for example you know that could be one of the mechanisms why people do that because they've got unresolved trauma in their past so the trick is to not do what a lot of authors and spiritual getting into trouble here but i mean a lot of people tell the wrong advice spiritual gurus all around the world say ignore your emotions um they're not important if you do that they'll they'll bounce back again and uh, that is not the path to actually um 
see the reflection now we have the physics you see so you know having the astrophysics data to back this up that this is really how the universe works um that you actually have to see the mirror see what's in your um in your environment if anything bothers you or triggers you there's a lesson there that's your higher self telling you there's something here for you to look at you know the person who's organized all this is um, your high, your own higher self before you're even born you've decided every single lesson not for the greatest comfort necessarily but for your maximum growth but the ironic thing is once you get this that magical life will start to increase so what kind of happens is you go right okay I get it um, everything is a mirror I've got to resolve it and as soon as you start to live like this and see everything 24-7 as that mirror and you know even when you you may be in the midst of an argument with your loved one or whatever <laughs> and as long as that 0.5 percent understands that process you are living like that 24 7 and if you do that guess what the arguments decrease the magic increases you know by actually getting the lessons and understanding how to resolve all this you actually move into a deeper reality which is more magical yeah. And then you can pulse really, I guess, also with the universe and more in harmony too, because I guess there is a, a disresonance otherwise, no? Yeah, so the evidence seems to suggest that um, people who are getting weighed down and more on the matter and antimatter, and they're not doing this breathing while it's continuously going up and down, it's this triad of the light, the matter and the antimatter. You could even say it's yourself, your shadow self and your higher self. You know, the higher self is out with space and time, and that's the part of you that's creating, you know, the stuff that's both in your future at a timeline and your present timeline. That's the controversial thing that I say that, you know, that the antimatter bit is actually in a backwards timeline. So it's your higher self that's actually the true manifestation, uh, manifester. People talk about the law of attraction. They're usually talking about it from the level of the matter ego self. Yeah. You know, so that's not the part that is truly manifesting. Otherwise, we could sit here and we could go, I want a Mercedes right here, right now. You know, and um, why doesn't that happen? Because it's not something that our higher selves have decided that that's going to be the best for us right now. It might be, you know, it might be what we've decided, but it's the higher self. And the true law of attraction is when you surrender the ego self to the higher self of you, you're not surrendering to anything outside of you, and realize that it's the aspect of you that's infinite, that's outside of space and time, that's really manifesting and really creating everything in your, your future and everything in your present and your past has all been created by your higher self before you're even born. You know, so what is there for us to do then? You are getting, we were co-creating. Oh my god! It's the act. This is one of the most controversial things. <laughs> um, it's but I have taught this for over ten years, and I've seen people get law of attraction fatigue, frustration, and even people saying, "Well, you're just not a good manifester." Then, and uh, you know, when you go through that and realize that um, there's a connection between you and your reality. That's the first stage. That's the normal law of attraction. And people go, oh, I manifested this. I'm a, then, it, then it stops working for people. And they're going, oh, I'm not doing it right. What's happening? And I see a lot of people in that stress going, I can't be a good person then. I'm not manifesting right. And also things that are so-called bad start to happen. And they go, Why did, how did that happen? How did I manifest that? And they beat themselves up because they think there's something wrong with them. Why they've actually, when they realize that that's not the point, The, the point is not to have, you know, this, that and the other and to manifest from the ego self because that's not the true riches. The true riches is how much light you take with you, you know. And when, you, when you're doing this process of moving stuff into the light, your light expands. And um, when you actually, in fact, I saw this guy on Oprah and he was actually looking at people, I know it's horrible to say, but you know, he was in a plane crash and he was seeing people leave, and going to the net. I don't know if you saw that episode. And he could see that people had different sizes of light. Now, what, when you actually, you know, take with you, what you take with you isn't your Mercedes, it's your light, you know. And um, so the more that you get, Um, the actual experiences 
the, the more treasure you're going to have, the more magic you're going to have. It, the, the law of attraction is taught completely in the wrong way. And um, so a person who's really going on the magical path, and you are doing it actually, I mean, I don't know if you'd articulate it in that way. You, you've surrendered the matter and antimatter self to the outer space and time self. That's the infinite part of you and you are just going with the flow and you're in that surrender and you realize that all you have to do is show up and you have to do the phone calls and everything like that but you realize that you're now aligned with your higher self. The surrender to higher self, you know, when you go through and your ego self becomes aligned to the higher self, that's really when the magic starts to open up. So the law of attraction is not happening from your ego self. You know, it is happening from the aspect of you that is infinite mm -hmm. and outer space. And yet we have a role to play I in that. Like it's not, it's not that because there is not the ego self that we are not existent because the ego kind of tricks us with that. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. You, you need all aspects. So the matter, the antimatter and the higher self, you know, it, it's all important, you know. So we call it the sea. The sea is the level of um, is speed of light. So that's the level of us below the speed of light. The C squared is the antimatter self, which is in the future. So that's the future coming to meet our present. And uh, so that's the antimatter self where everything that's going to happen to you has already happened in the C squared region. So where's the choice? You know, everyone goes, oh, it's law of attraction. The choice is the bit that's out of space and time. And so out of space and time, your higher self is continuously putting things into your timelines the c and the c squared uh, speed the speed of light and the speed of light squared region are mirror worlds of each other you know so this is a new black hole physics so we're moving beyond the quantum theory and discovering all the antimatter that physicists don't know what happened to it after the big bang it's been there all along it's just been in a slightly different time frame so ultimately time uh, there's time and there's no time you know, so you've got a timeline and you've got um, you've got a forward timeline, you've got a backward timeline. Ultimately, can you see they all cancel out and all there is is the eternal now? Mm. You know, but um, there's all... I like the eternal now instead yeah. of the present moment <laughs> or the flow or the now. Yeah, the eternal now. Exactly, yeah. but where we are is we are seeing things from the perspective of C. It's not to be ignored. You know, so a little baby grows up into an adult. That's, that timeline is not to be ignored. Ultimately, there's just the eternal now, but we have time and no time at the same time. So we are living, we, we shouldn't ignore the fact that we are living a forward timeline. And we've also got the backwards timeline in the C squared coming to meet us. So I call it living from C squared. So you meet certain people and you go, I recognize you from my future. I know you're going to play a big part in my life. You shift over from pushing things to happen mm. to allowing things to manifest, to, to just come into your life. To show up because it's already there. Oh my God, that's a big Lovely. shift. This is living from C squared. Mm. That's what I call it. Mm. So you're allowing, you're not fighting. And um, so you become in harmony with your C your C squared and your higher self out of space and time. And the light just beams out. Exactly. <laughs> In and out from everywhere. Huh? Light from the cells, from the chakras, from... Exactly. Does, yeah. the, does the chakra also beam light? The chakras, I've finally um, produced a science of chakras. Um, the same black hole principle that's happening at the center of galaxies it's happening all the way down in the sun, in the planets. That's why they give out these bipolar jets, these two jets that you see around black holes. You also see coming out of planets. And you also see, this is all the data that's in the, in the book, the hard physics data, you know. And then you've got them coming out in thunderstorms. So you can see the same process happening all the way down. Atoms, uh -huh. you know, radioactivity. You have the same sort of processes, electrons being given out, gamma rays being given out, and radioactivity. The same processes. So it's going all the way from the macro to the micro, and the chakras as well. Well, what do we know about chakras? They're spinning vortices, just like a black hole. They're not in, mostly not in this dimension, but they create something what we call physical, just like a black hole. You know, just this new definition of black hole principle. 